Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. It's February and love is in the air, so today I'm gonna show you how to paint this rose on a greeting card just in time for Valentine's Day. But first, I wanna spoil you. I've teamed up with the folks at Spoil to send one of my lucky US-based viewers a surprise gift box. All you have to do to enter is to share this video on your favorite social media network or blog, then visit their site using the links below and let me know what kind of spoil you would like in the comments. Choose from artsy and funky to warm and cozy as well as others. And while you're there, you might want to send a spoil to someone you love. Just be sure to order by February 10th if you want Valentine's Day delivery. Now, let's get painting! Here you can see I have the palette that I made out of an old makeup compact right here on my table, as well as a piece of plastic to use as a palette. I'm just gonna go ahead and sketch a rose using my water brush and paint directly on my paper. I am using a Canson greeting card. It's about five inches by seven inches folded, and I am just drawing in the basic shape using my paint and paintbrush. I'm using a dark red, kind of like a crimson or scarlet color. You can use any sort of um, really deep, true red color for this. Um, I'm using a water brush, but go ahead and use any round brush that you have. A water brush is really handy if you're working in a small space or you don't have room to have a water bucket around, but um, it will also feed water out as you go, so you might not be used to that. Just give yourself a little patience and time if you're working with a water brush for the first time. Now, I got a reference photo off of Paint My photo for this project and the photo is from Deborah Babcock and I'll put a link to her photograph as well in the video description so you can follow along at home if you want to have the actual photo reference to go by. I know that's helpful. Sometimes it, it can seem a little abstract when you're watching somebody paint um, and you can't see what they're painting from. I'm just kind of building up the flower here. I'm doing this um, petal in the front here. And I'm not really worried about the dark lines that I'm making with this paint because it's watercolor and I can always add water and soften those lines later. I hope my uh, raspy post-cold voice isn't bothering anybody today. I'm using a microphone and voicing this over so that I know I can make it loud enough for you to hear. I'm just going in and adding in the basic shapes and here I have kind of the hip of the rose, kind of where all the petals come together at the bottom and then I'll be able to put my stem off of there in a moment. Now I'm painting on some rose buds. Just make kind of like um, upside down teardrop shapes wherever you think they belong. Now I took a little autistic license and this isn't exactly where they were on the photograph, but sometimes you need to make things work with your paper that you're using, the size you're using, and you need to um, move things around to make it balance, and that's completely okay for you to do. I wanted to offer another little tip on my palette. I just took a um, Spellbinders packaging and I stuck a piece of white paper in there and it makes a perfect palette for this uh, little setup I have here. I'm adding some lemon yellow throughout the, um, the flower because I want it to have a little bit of richness of color. I know it's traditional to send a red rose on Valentine's Day, but kind of just paint something all red lacks a lot of... Um, I don't know, depth and dimension. So by doing this yellow underpainting, it's gonna give it a lot of warmth and I think make it quite interesting. Now to clean my water brush, I'm simply squeezing it to release some water and wiping it on a paper towel. That's all it takes, so that's really nice. Now I mentioned before that I um, recently put a desk upstairs in my office so I could paint upstairs, so keeping supplies to a minimum is really important. I'm adding some Opera Pink, which is this gorgeous color by Winsor & Newton, but it's not part of my everyday painting color and I'd put it in my little um, makeup palette there because I thought it would be fun to, to use that once in a while, especially this time of year. And I just like the, I don't know, it's just such, such a pure pink. Sometimes pinks are muddy, but this is such a pure pink that I just love the way it reacts with the yellow and the red. And um, I'm painting this and voicing this over in real time. This um, painting took me about 12 minutes to do. It may take you a little bit longer if you're a beginner or if you're working larger. You may do it quicker if you're working smaller. So just keep that in mind. Now I'm using sap green to paint the little leaves that come off the bottom of the flower right around the hip. They're kind of long and skinny and they have a really interesting shape to them so it's kind of fun to capture their essence with watercolor. I, there's the hip of the flower and then I'm putting in the stem and I'm also connecting stems to the rosebuds that I painted. And I could even say, like right here at the this, this spot that the painting is right now, that it's very fun and pretty and you could almost call it a day, but I'm gonna show you how to add more details as we go along. Now I'm taking some more concentrated sap green paint and adding it to the edges of my wet paint that I've already added there with the green that has more water in it. 
And by doing that, it is um, going to give me some darks and lights and shadows and highlights and just make it look a lot more interesting. Now I'm sketching on the leaves wherever I think they ought to be. Just making oval shapes with um, some watered down paint. So you can see on my palette how I've added some water to that. And the reason I like to do it like this is because I can get the base in, I can get the colors in. See, I'm adding a little bit of that lemon yellow just to, um, for one, make it harmonize with my flower petals, but also to give it more interest and to warm it up a little bit. And after I've got the base shapes in, I can go in with more concentrated color and bring out the detail in the edge of the petals. So I blotted my brush. I don't know if you caught that on the edge there. I just blotted my brush. I'm doing it right there to make sure I don't have any extra moisture in my brush. And then I can kind of tap in those jagged edges on the sides of my leaves. And then some of the color is going to stay concentrated there and some of it's going to leach in towards the center. And it's just going to give us like a really beautiful, natural, loose watercolor look. Now you can do really detailed watercolors, but I prefer a more loose look with mine. Now I'm taking some of that uh, crimson red and adding it to the green, and look how it makes such a beautiful, natural looking shadow. I'm adding that in any of the parts of my leaves and stems that I think would be darker and more shadowed. Now, if you've ever looked at roses, you'll notice sometimes they even have very pure red veining and streaking in the leaves. You can go ahead and do that with that same red that you use to paint the flower with. That's how we cross pollinate our flowers and our paintings, and it makes everything match and look as if it belongs. I love the look of that crisp red right next to that green. I think it really makes all the colors pop. Now it's time to sketch on those petals that are wrapped around the rosebuds. And they're the exact same petals that we painted originally right underneath the flower, those tall skinny ones. So those just kind of wrap around those pink rosebuds that we painted. It adds such a nice character to the painting, I think. It, they're fun to paint. I really love doing rosebuds. And again, I'm using the sap green. I'm using some of that red to make shadows and I'm just painting them in. Now when you're using a round brush and there's a reason why round brushes are my favorite for watercolor is because you can get right on the tip of the brush and get a super detailed fine line or you can press your brush a little bit and get um, a really wide wash. So with this water brush that I have it's um, I think it's either the medium or the large size water brush I have this huge range of um, styles I can do with just one brush and as I mentioned before I'm painting upstairs in my office I don't have a lot of space but this really makes me maximize what I can do so limited supplies but maximized stuff I can do with them I guess does that make sense I hope so I'm painting in some veins and some details into my leaves now uh, using some of the more concentrated sap green now I set this palette up yesterday and um, it already dried up overnight because I had it upstairs near the heaters. So, and I think because the makeup palettes are so small, so when you squeeze out that little bit of paint, it doesn't take long to dry it out. I just thought I'd mention that for those of you that follow my channel regularly. Now I'm taking that crimson red and I'm going back over my flower and I can pretty much make out how I originally sketched it on there with the paint. So I'm defining my lines. And don't worry if, it, if you think it starts to look cartoony because we're gonna soften some of the edges here. So basically what you're doing is going in and outlining the original sketch you made. I really can't get over how much I'm enjoying the crimson red, the opera pink, and the lemon yellow together. They just really um, tickle my fancy, I have to say. I love those colors. And um, I'm just outlining and adding shadows. You can see that larger patch of red I put in there. That's going to be um, a fairly shadowed area of the flower. And I wanted to make sure I had enough paint in there before I go to blend. And here I'm adding more paint anywhere. I'd have like an underturned petal. You can see where there would be kind of deep crevices in the flower. I'm going in and adding uh, more color. Now I've squeezed my brush so I've allowed some more paint to come through. And you can simply just dip your brush in water if you're not using a water brush. And I am dragging that color out. I'm just kind of pulling it. So my brush is wet and I'm just pulling that color out. And so I get a much uh, nicer, softer blend. I'm doing the same technique underneath this front turned over petal. I'm just adding the color, then squeezing the brush and letting it kind of flow outward. I'm putting some more color in the buds just to give it a little more interest. 
and you can really just kind of play it by ear. Like I said, I have a reference photo I'm going from, but you can always, um, you know, add to it, subtract from it, put different colors in. I like to put a little spattering in the background. And at this point, I'm thinking I've used pretty much every color I want, but then I was thinking, you know, I don't have a single blue here. And maybe I would want to put a little blue in the sky and then have that option of a blue for darkening my, um, my flower color. So in a moment, I'm going to be grabbing for some ultramarine blue. Right now, I'm just kind of dabbing in some of the greens and yellows into the background that I've already used. So there's my ultramarine. I'm putting it on my palette and I'm adding some of that here and there in the background. I find backgrounds are a great way to unify your colors. So if there's a color you want to get into a painting and you're kind of halfway through it, you can go ahead and put it in the background and then work it into the rest of your painting and it will make it harmonize. Blue is a great color for darkening um, greens down. You can also use blue with that scarlet to make a purple for the super, super dark parts in your flower. It's just really nice to have your primary colors there to work from. I'm going back in with some more sap green and I'm going to add some details, some more details on my leaves and stems. So here around the hips, I'm just um, outlining them. I'm giving a little more definition to those tiny little petals around the bottom of my flower. And I like to kind of go in as my painting starts to dry and crispen up the lines here and there. So I have that contrast between the loose background and some of the loose washes. And then I've got some nice tight detail too. So it's kind of playing that um, washy, loosey watercolorness against the kind of tight detail crisp lines that makes a painting really come together. You want it to look effortless, you want it to look fun, but you do want to be able to get in there and control some parts of the picture uh, so that you can really put what you have in your mind on the paper. Now here's what I was telling you about um, using that scarlet red with the um, the blue to make a really nice shadow color for your flowers. I can go in with that purple that I just mixed and I can add just the slightest touches of shadow and detail into the flower. And it doesn't really muddy it up, but it gives it a little sharpness. Now it's up to you whether you wanna add that or if you wanna keep it looser, it's completely your choice. But it's nice to have that extra level of um, depth that we can reach to if we need to. I'm even adding some of that into the rosebuds around the, um, the leaves there that are wrapping around just to give it a little bit more dimension. So, you know, if you know how colors work, if you get used to mixing them and seeing how they work together, you can really do a lot with your paintings. Since I started this painting by taping it down onto this uh, scrap of foam core, I get to remove the tape and have a beautiful white border on the edge of my card. That's a little trick there. If you ever want to have that finished border, just use some masking tape and tape it down to a piece of cardboard or your table or what have you. And then when you're done, you have this beautiful finished edge. It just makes it look like it's already matted and framed. You know, it just gives it that professional look, which is perfect for a greeting card. I hope you enjoyed today's uh, video tutorial. I want to thank Spoil for sponsoring our giveaway today. All the details and links are in the video description for you to check out. Thank you so much for stopping by. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Until next time, happy crafting!